I think first of all, to give a bit of context, can you introduce yourself and a bit of a run through of your career journey? Sure. Thanks for having me, uh, Emma. It's great to, to be here with you today. My name is Dorina Nash. I'm, um, I live in Cluj, Romania, um, and my current role is with Emerson, uh, which is a global automation uh, uh, leader for um, you know, industries such as energy, a lot of solutions uh, for a sustainable future and uh, sustainable environment. Um, and I've been with the, with Emerson for almost 13 years now. Um, the majority of, uh, of the time uh, being part of uh, marketing teams from uh, marketing communications to um, customer research, branding, customer experience. So I've been very lucky to, to be able to experience all these different areas of marketing. And for the past five years, I've been part of various human resources teams working on projects um, still a little bit, uh, you know, marketing uh, flavored like uh, employer branding, learning and development, employee experience. And currently I'm part of the global culture team um, and my role covers employee communications and employee experience. At the moment, a perfect work-life balance is really being presented in the media. Do you feel that this is a helpful or an attainable goal? Well, anything which is labeled as perfect, I think it's unrealistic and it can end up putting a lot of pressure on ourselves when we try to achieve this perfect um, situation. And that's applicable for work like work life balance as well. And um, for me personally, it's a matter of, you know, looking at things from a broader perspective and not day by day. Um, each day is different and sometimes you're busier at work. Um, then of course you won't have the time for yourself, your family, your friends and the things that matter to you as much as you would have um, during days which you know work is not that critical or that busy. But um, I look at things on a weekly base basis, monthly basis, and um, some things are really non-negotiable for me. Um, I need time to for myself to recharge my batteries, whether that's you know spending time with my family or just uh, a nice outdoor um, experience or yoga classes or just hiding in a uh, in a nice corner and reading a book. I think in the media, it really portrays giving 100% to both continuously. And it's just not realistic. And I think that can really play into guilt on the social side of things, but also imposter syndrome on the work side of things. Um, and actually, KPMG did a study and 75% of female executives across industries have experienced imposter syndrome have you experienced this and kind of how have you navigated your way through feeling that well I think it, the imposter syndrome for me is there almost all the time um, and not just um, uh, professionally but also in, in my personal life <clears throat> I'm sorry there's always that feeling of you know not being good enough um, not not a good enough mother partner friend not being good enough to myself um, and then all those um, work related standards and goals we're uh, we're setting for for ourselves and um, we're trying to to achieve but for me and and it's really annoying because it's that inner voice nagging all the time and um, um, it's been really difficult for for some situ in some situations for me but um, I started learning to listen to it and um, to understand that it's trying to, to protect me from all the things which could go wrong. So it's safer to, to sit in my um, uh, corner, well-known, um, no surprises. And um, the moment I invite this part of me, because it is a part of me, like probably a part of all of us or a lot of us 
um, just to invite it to a conversation and um, understand what it's trying to protect me from. And then thinking how realistic is that, how probable that outcome is. And um, then just thinking what are the actual ways I can uh, work on not letting that happen for myself. Um, it's work in progress. It's happening a lot of time. And uh, um, if I forget about it, I just realize it's it has a tendency to overtake everything and to become the loudest voice in my uh, in my mind. So do you think it's possible to actually get rid of it? Or do you think it's just that you'll be able to quieten that voice? I don't think you can uh, <clears throat> get rid of it. And um, the harder I try to, um, you know, ignore it or uh, just um, hide it in a, in a corner, um, it just came back louder and uh, stronger. So um, just make, I just made room for it. And uh, then it goes quiet and, uh, you know, later on you can uh, um, be a little bit uh, um, cheeky and just uh, show it back to, to it. Look all the things uh, uh, I've been through and nothing happened as you were scared of. So who have been some of your biggest supporters throughout your career? So many of them, really. And I know I've been I've been really lucky to to meet um, um, a lot of good people. But uh, these were my um, my managers uh, throughout my my career, my my teammates, my friends, and I think um, developing those relationships at at work and having friends at work is really. Um, crucial for uh, um, a good professional life and achieving that work-life balance we were uh, discussing uh, previously. Um, we spend so much time at work and that's a fact, right? So um, we don't have to, to separate these two things and support can come from, from anyone, really. Just need to... Um, invest in building that trust and developing relationships so success can mean something different to anyone and I think it can sometimes mean something more per in your personal life and more in your work life what does success look like to you for me success is a lot about balance and finding that um, balance between all the things I want in, to be part of my, my life. And it's also made up of little things because, um, you know, as I was mentioning relationships before, I think that's, that's a great uh, sign of success for me, uh, having people I can um, reach out to and I can connect with and learn from um, friends I can I can laugh with and do fun things together or just um, to listen to and offer my my support whenever I can and um, get support from uh, from them um, trying out new ideas especially at, at work and uh, uh, turning them from ideas to to real things and and making them happen um, being able to, to to have that time to finish a good book. I enjoy going on holidays. I don't know, all these little things. And again, the, the broader perspective uh, of um, having all of these in my life, this is, you know, really, really success. I think in terms of balance, actually self-care and work, they intertwine a lot more um, because sometimes the best thing you can do professionally is to take a break and that will improve your work and sometimes actually that bit of self-care is you need to stay up late and finish that project that will that will lead to better self-care in the future um and I think sometimes we split them up so much when actually they're a lot more intertwined than we realize uh, absolutely and um <clears throat> I think that connects back to self-awareness and understanding um what are your your needs in terms of um, 
self-care definitely so so rest um recharging your energy and uh but also getting things done because this can be energizing as well and uh, getting things off your plate and um um again there is no perfect day in uh in one's life so if you need to stay late today but you can then free your schedule on friday afternoons then things should be perfectly balanced right so kind of finally what does it mean to you to be a leader um i think it's an opportunity for continuous continuous learning and growth as uh, for me personally um and it it ties back to to self awareness the what we just uh, uh, quickly covered um, because I think in order to to be a decent leader, not to use, you know, the, the big words, you need to um, be aware of your strength, your weaknesses, what are the things which energize you, which are the things which drain your energy, um, to understand and manage your mood, because... Um, you know, we tend to label some emotions as being negative, and those are the most contagious. So if you're, if I'm in a bad mood, and um, I join a team meeting, I'll probably influence everyone's mood that day. And that's not something um, I'd want to do, um, not consciously, at least. Um, so because when I'm able to, to understand myself, then I'm able to really listen to people uh, around me and to um, be present and there for them and support and help with what they need rather than what I think they need. And um, mm -hmm. there's no universal recipe. Um, what works today might not work tomorrow. And I think that's great for, you know, keeping us um, um, agile mentally and, and emotionally as well.